Aloha. Hey, I'm Wally Carmichael. I am the host and founder of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. And today we are talking about how we can enhance your mindset so that you too can live a life of abundance. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we actually found Wally. Wally, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing amazing, brother. How are you doing? Fantastic. Now, obviously, the audience around here is people that are business people, and they are also looking to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, I came across your podcast, um, you know, a show that actually helps men to thrive and be abundant in everything that they do in their family, in their faith, in their finances, and in their fitness. So all of these things are the good values that people are actually striving for so that they have either a business that's profitable and enjoyable or they actually have a happier existence. Now, that's the reason why we've brought you in today so we can have a quick chat and find out you know, what it is that you actually do and how you can help some of the people in our audience there, Wally. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, my pleasure. I'm looking forward to this. Understandable. No. There's a lot of things that happen in a man's life. Um, First of all, when they get married, maybe they are supposed to be, um, you know, the sole provider of the household. Now the burdens come in and they don't have anyone else to talk to. You talk to these men and, um, you know, help them go through all of these things. What is the one common thing that you usually find that men are actually struggling with right this moment? One of the biggest things, and specifically talking about businessmen, people that are trying to start their own business or they're trying to chase that high, you know, that that dollar bill, uh, whatever currency it is, it doesn't matter around the world. Everybody is so fixed on chasing this dollar bill. And don't get me wrong. I like making money. I like adding value to other people's lives. And I like making a few bucks. There's nothing like the feeling to me, to you and I, and to many of your listeners to actually make a couple bucks adding value to somebody else's life from something that we created. That's just amazing. But when you fixate your mindset on earning a dollar bill, you lose track of, I find that many men lose track of what they really want, which is living a happy life, having abundance in family, faith, finances, and fitness. And the fact of the matter is most guys will never truly realize that as long as they're chasing the dollar bill. That right there, that right there is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. You know, being able to be, do what you do, be home doing what you do, being close to your family and stuff like that happens. And and you know what? And, and just live through it, man. Being, you know, I live out here in Hawaii. We were talking before the show. I'm a laid back type of guy. I go with the flow. Um, I'm a hard worker. I, you know, I I dig in and that's what I, I want other guys to just live the life that they want to live. Not everybody likes the Hawaii style life. Some people like the city life. But the bottom line is I want you to live the life that you want to live. And the first thing that you you really have to do is to realize what it is you don't want in your life. Because so many people start with what they do want. Most people can build a list of what they don't want much quicker than they can build a list of what they do want. I found that very intriguing as I've been working with a lot of guys. Great stuff. Well, thank you so much for that input. Now, let's just, you know, pull it back a little bit and pull the curtain in a little bit. A few, a lot of people would not actually understand what it actually means to be abundant or to have an abundant mentality. Can you just give a a brief overview of what that means and, um, you know, how one can actually um, arrive at such a, a, a position in life? Yeah, absolutely. And I can just speak for myself. And I start off that way because I've had hundreds of conversations with men and women and mostly men for the podcast. And I asked that very question, what does living a life of abundance mean to you? And it's different for everybody. But for me, it's being able to have enough resources, have a healthy lifestyle, have a healthy life, have healthy, great relationship with my family, and have enough finances to live a life in my the lifestyle that I want to live the abundance part in addition to that is is living a life of significance to be able to give your time treasures and talents to other people as well 
you don't always have to give money. You can give your time and tr your talents as, as well. So that, that's basically what it is to me is to live my life the way I want to live it and to be able to provide to the community and other men in my experiences, my wisdom, to anybody who's willing to sit down long enough and listen to it and take, you know, take a few ideas from what I've learned over my life. Understandable. Thank you so much. Because a lot of people don't quite realize that there's enough for everybody to go, go around. You know what I mean? And once you start having that sort of attitude of abundance, you now have a lot to give out of and your relationships and your, um, the things that you do become more fulfilling. Now, what have you then found out, um, especially maybe we can draw it back a little bit. How did you come about um, starting to deal, first of all, with this website? Is there something personal that would have happened that, you know, um, triggered this for you to, you know, you know, initiate trying to help other men have an abundant lifestyle? Yeah, it, it started out from a long list, long, many years of me, like I said, chasing after that dollar bill. I went $30,000 in credit card debt twice, uh, trying to start some sort of business venture and basically stressing my wife out to the point to where her hair was literally falling out. And she always asked me, what are you chasing? What are you after? And just look around you type of thing. And my wife, I ha she's my rock, man. I've been with her this December 25 years. And it was about four years ago now, time is flying so fast. It was about four years ago, I'm living on the beach. I've got healthy kids. I've got a wonderful relationship with my wife. I've got a great steady income. I've got side hustles going on where I got a little bit of money coming in there. And I've just got this amazing lifestyle. And I realized I'm sitting on the beach and I realized I'm living this amazing life. I, I have abundance in my life. And from that came the idea. I got introduced to a guy who teaches people how to and coaches people how to write a book come up with a title, come up with an idea type of thing. I sat down with him and I already had this kind of abundance thing going on in my head. We got to talking and we came up with the title called Living Your Life of Abundance. As I started writing this book, I realized the book was basically a biography of me and I did not want that. And I knew there were other guys out there living a life of abundance in their own right. So long story short, I realized that there was this guy, Ryan Daniel Moran and other people who wanted to talk to influencers. So they started these conferences like in Austin, uh, Freedom Fastlane Conference, Thrive Conference with um, uh, Cole Hatter. Cool. And all of these guys, they wanted to have these amazing conversations with these amazing men that they wanted to emulate and they wanted to learn from. So they created a conference and then had other people come in and they paid these guys. So they got to get one-on-one -on -one time with people like Grant Cardone and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, so then I got introduced to um, John Lee Dumas through podcasting and realized he had a free podcast um, course. I took the course, immediately paid for his full course, got into the Podcasters Paradise community, um, got linked up with a bunch of other guys, and I got on the phone with John Lee Dumas. He said, dude, just do it. Uh, Men of Abundance is a great name. And I started my podcast over a year, well over a year ago now. And then it just it just took on a life of its own. I started the podcast to collect na to collect stories from my book, Living Your Life of Abundance. So it wouldn't just be about me. And about six months into it, eight, six, seven, eight months into it, I started getting guys contacting me and saying, hey, would you, do you coach? Would you coach me in living a life of abundance? I had a, a woman call me or message me on Facebook or something. She's like, hey, I would like for you to mentor my husband. I was like, <laughs> I appreciate that, but it don't work like that. I mean, he kind of needs to want to enhance his mindset. I don't talk about changing your mindset. I talk about enhancing your mindset. I said, maybe have him listen to the podcast. If it's something he can relate to, then have him give me a call or, you know, connect with me and, and we'll go from there. But I'm just super humbled with, with the life that it's taken on its own. And I'm just digging what I'm doing. And I see a lot more for it in the future. Understandable. Because the thing about it is, um, you talk about stuff that people are not comfortable in talking about in their own living room, which makes it very, you know, important. And people are always searching for information so that they get to know what's happening around money, sex, love, relationships. And you touch upon that um, a great deal, which is fantastic. Now, in 
the whole teaching about abundance, there's a lot of giving and there's a lot of receiving. Now, I would be sitting here and asking myself, if I give, 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 would I still have enough for me to go by? Or, you know, how, how does that whole mindset really, really work for somebody who doesn't understand that they have to actually give in order to receive? Yeah, no, that's a very good question. And it's a fair question. Um, you know, if you have all your resources, you give all your resources away. Well, then what do you have to live on for yourself and your family? Very fair question. And many people will tell you that it's just like when you're on the airplane, you have to put your oxygen mask on before you can help anybody else. You have to make sure that your family is stable and comfortable before you can start giving monetarily. But like I said earlier, you can still give of your time and, and talents. You don't always have to, have to give of your physical resources. You know what I'm saying? So, and to give of your time and talents is infinite. I mean, time is a little, not infinite, but to give of your talents, you can always do that. You can always make time to do that. And there's going to be a time where at some point, as you start giving of your time and talents, people are going to realize your time and talents. They're going to start asking for it. And when they start asking for it, that's when you can start charging for your time. And it's a fine line, you know, and it takes some time to get to that point. But one thing I want to point out, Prosper, is back four years ago when I made the realization that I'm living a life of abundance and I've never really had a scarcity mindset. I grew up in a trailer behind another man's house. Then when my parents got divorced, we moved from a trailer behind a man's house to a trailer park, you know. And so I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I, I, my, you know, I grew up pretty poor uh, from my environment. But once I made that realization that I'm in fact living a life of abundance, so much more opened up to me that, I, that was already there. That's the thing. Everything was already there. It's just I started to get connections with these people, get connections with these people. These people had uh, opportunities that I'd ha be able to have a conversation with somebody else. And it just seemed like everything got so much easier as soon as I took on that abundance mindset. And like I said, it really didn't have that much of a scarcity mindset, but I, I wasn't worried about where's the next paycheck going to come from. I just started really focusing on how am I going to add value to other people and so much more started coming into my life. So to really sum that up, like I said, it's a great question, but the fact of the matter is, the more people you help get what they want, the more you're going to get, you're going to get more than you even imagined. Understandable. It takes um, a, a different sort of enhanced mindset to actually, um, you know, acknowledge that fact. Uh, I think it would have been Jim Rohn that says help enough people to get what they want and you too will get um, whatever it is that you want. So while you're answering that question, something popped up. You were talking about connecting with other people. You were talking about, um, you know, enhancing your relationships and just expanding and being very abundant. Now, a lot of people would be very afraid to let a lot of people in. Now, is fear really something that stops people from um, expanding? Or if somebody is afraid, what would you say so that they can actually realize that they too can be, do, and have a life that's of, you know, of an abundance um, existence? Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good question. And I just... <sighs> there's fear of many different things. And when we're talking about connecting with people, starting a business, something that this nature doing something that you have not done before getting out of your comfort zone. Most of the questions when I ask all of my guests, what holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? 80% or more have said that four letter word fear. And many of them explain it a little bit different. And then you've heard the acronym, you know, you've heard the acronym fear, uh, false evidence appearing real. Appearing real, yes. Personally, the fear is real. You know, when you sit and think about right now, if you were to sit and think about if you're afraid of standing up in front of people and to the thought of standing up and giving a 15 or a five minute presentation to a group of 10 people, that your heart rate's going to go up. You're going to start sweating. Your palms are going to get sweaty. The anxiety is going to build up. The fear is real. You got to go back and look at what is the evidence. What are you fearing? Are you fearing rejection? Are you fearing what people are going to think about you? 
Are you fearing, you know, am I going to, am I going to suck? You know, and chances are those, the evidence is real too. Because when I started this podcast, when John Lee Dumas said, look, just start. I already had, I didn't even have my first episode recorded. I was afraid to contact the first person. Then the first person, after I made the decision to do it, he contacted, it was somebody I was just having a conversation with. He said, I want to be your first guest. I'm excited for you. I want to be your first guest. I was like, what? I didn't even have to ask. It came to me. So I had my first guest. It sucked. It wasn't a great conversation. I went through my questions. I fumbled around. I had to edit a lot. So the evidence is real. It may suck. It may be a terrible experience. But you know what? You do it again. And it gets a little bit better and you do it again and it gets a little bit better. I think of that, you know, if you go to a, a local pool, a public pool and you have the high dive and you see the kid on the high dive or you yourself have been on the high dive and it takes you, it feels like 10, 15 minutes to jump off. But once you do it the first time, you're like, Hey, I didn't die. And in fact, it was the most exhilarating thing I've ever done in my life. Then you do it again and again. And the next day you're doing flips and you're doing backflips and you're doing gainers. And after a while, you're like a pro, you know, it's like, this is nothing. It's the same thing, you know? So yeah, the fear is real. The evidence is real. If people may talk about you, it may suck, but you're going to get better. And if you truly want to do what it is that you're, that you're fearful of doing, just the, the cure for fear is action. That's the only cure. The cure for fear is action. Once you take action, it gets a little bit easier each time. I understand. That's your question. Oh yeah, definitely. And more. Thank you so much for that. Now, um, obviously you did say your first episode was a bit of, um, you shaking in your boots and you didn't know what to do. And then somebody came around and said, you know what? I want to be the first person to do it. And fast forward to today, you know, you've done over a hundred episodes and continuously are going to be doing that more. Obviously you've stayed focused and you've stayed engaged and true, uh, to your, to your word. What has kept you, um, you know, so focused because many a time, a lot of people lose momentum. A lot of people lose, um, the tenacity, the zeal and the stick to itiveness of actually pulling it through, you know, what, what has gotten you to stick around this long and you know sharing your story with us here today well first of all i really enjoy having conversations like this with other men and women i absolutely love it i thrive on this i really enjoy it but i'll tell you that did happen i did lose my momentum and my zeal a little bit because as we were talking before the show um i'm in the process i, I moved my family we went to florida for a couple of weeks and for the week or so before our departure and for the two or three weeks that I was there, I wasn't doing anything at all with the podcast, with the Men of Abundance community or anything. I kind of batched everything and I pushed it out forward. So I got out of my routine. I got out of momentum. And when I got back here, because now I'm in Hawaii, I'm by myself. My family's not here with me. I got all the time in the world, but my routine got messed up. And it took me a good week to actually sit down and start editing some more shows. It took me about a week to actually start contacting more people to be more guests on the show. And at this point, I don't really have to contact a whole lot of people. There's certain people I want to talk to, but I have so many connections. So many people are giving me people to talk to and uh, a couple agencies send me people to talk to uh, some great influencers, but it took me a while to, I, I literally lost interest and lost momentum. So now over the last week, I've been just nonstop the consistency. So to answer your question, one of the two things is one, you have to absolutely have to have know your why, why are you doing what you want to do? My values are involved in this. So my values are very important. And then the second thing to that on a mechanical level is consistency. Be consistent with what you're doing. Um, it, no matter what it is you're doing, put it on the calendar. If you're doing it two, three times a week, make it consistent two, three times a week. Don't break it up. Cause I took that, three or four weeks off and I lost full momentum. 
Wow. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, good thing we've got you back, back on track. I mean, it does happen to err is human. And you've also mentioned something that's really important. Um, um, thank you so much, Wally, for, for, you know, saying your expertise and your time with us. Um, one question that came up while you were talking, you said you now have people um, that are bringing, you know, clients to you or um, guests for your show. That means you would have branded yourself um, particularly well, uh, you know, as, 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 as the person that lives a life of abundance. Is that something that you would recommend, uh, you know, somebody who's starting out to actually do to brand themselves so that they are known for something and have, you know, things coming to them just because they are exuding the abundance out there wherever they go? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ultimately, that's the point you want to get to as a business and as a brand. You want people to be able to recognize if I'm looking for this particular service, this is the company I go to, or this is the person that I go to. Uh, you always ultimately want that, but understand this, that doesn't happen overnight. Um, I've been doing this for over a year. It wasn't until I was a good eight months So today. It's not going to post till then, but that's because I, I branded myself and I made connections. Every time I have a conversation with somebody, um, I s immediately follow up with an email. I post their information. I post their episode as well on all platforms. I connect with them on all the platforms. I, I add value to them. They don't feel, I don't want them to feel obligated to add value back to me because they've already given me much value by being on my show and having the conversation with me, which I greatly appreciate. So I want to add as much value to them as I possibly can. If they feel compelled or if they've run into somebody who they feel would be a great, have, you know, be a, um, have a great story for my show for the men of abundance podcast, then they'll refer them to me. And it happens several times a week, sometimes several times a day. And some guys say, Hey, I want you, you need to get on this guy's show type of thing, you know, and, and that's just the greatest honor to be invited on somebody else's show like yours. So huge honor. I didn't say that up front. I don't take this lightly that you would share me with your guests because uh, with your listeners, because it's, a, it's, I don't take it lightly at all. It's a huge honor. Well, thank you. I mean, for accepting and being on the show and giving us so much value that, um, you know, is 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 all from your years of experience and you know your lessons that you've learned along the way now somebody might be watching this show right now and is sitting at the edge of their seat and is just really wanting to get uh, more information and find out how you two can help them be do and have either a business that's abundant or profitable and um you know or a life that's of a happier existence how can people get a hold of you there wally Number one is just at menofabundance.com. All of my social media um, links are all up there on the top of the website. Anybody who wants to become a member of my Men of Abundance uh, community, Facebook community, go to menofabundance.com forward slash members and just look through there. It's men only. Sorry, ladies. I know we have a lot to learn from the ladies, but <laughs> those groups are just for the ladies. Now, ladies, if you do want to get into it, the Men of Abundance podcast, obviously, and the Men of Abundance fan page on Facebook. Just search Men of Abundance. You'll find the fan page. I'm always having conversations and sharing great stuff for everybody. Understandable. Well, if you've been watching this show and, um, you know, you've noticed that we're always bringing in experts that have, you know, done the stuff that you are trying to learn and they have all the experience and all the lessons that you might be searching for. So first of all, if this is your first time on the online prosperity show, welcome and be sure to subscribe to this channel because we do hang around with um, experts like uh, Wally that will be talking to you so that they can enhance your mindset so that you can have the relationships, the income and the life that you know you, you want and deserve. Okay. Now, thank you so much Wally for your time today and spending, um, you know, a bit of, um, this afternoon with us so you can tell us your story and how you can actually help men to have an abundance mindset. Oh, my pleasure, man. Aloha. I truly appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much.